Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to grow from zero to your first 1000 subscribers on YouTube. And the tips that we're gonna be applying today is actually gonna help you out on any social media platform that you're trying to grow. So don't think that you have to be a YouTuber to be able to apply these tips. This can apply for like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever platforms that you're using. So I hope you find this content to be valuable. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and and leave a like on the videos you enjoy the most as we continue to grow the channel if you have any ideas or recommendations for video content you would like to see in the future go ahead and leave that in the comments where i review these on a weekly basis so i will keep an eye out on what you're recommending and suggesting so we can get that content out to you as soon as possible all right so with that being stated let's just jump right into this video so at this point in our lives we all can see that social media plays a huge part in the way media and information is being consumed in today's market that's whether if you're a content entrepreneur or a small business this is probably one of the easiest ways where you can get word of mouth of your company or your brand where from a traditional standpoint you'll be spending money on advertisements via direct mail, newspaper ads, billboards, whatever you can afford from that traditional standpoint of marketing. And today I wanna to show you the value of creating an online presence where you can target your specific audience that you're trying to reach. And when those audience members find the content that you're providing, and deem it as being valuable that is one way where you can see your subscriber account go from zero to 1000 so when it comes to youtube getting your audience to actually subscribe is probably the most challenging part and this is where you have to look at what videos are performing well the most so you have your analytics that you can look at and it's not something where you have to go within YouTube studio, although that is extremely beneficial. You can look at the performance of your videos on any platform and see what do people engage with the most. And this is where we have to identify which videos attract the most subscribers because there's videos that are going to perform well beyond our expectations. And then there's videos that are just gonna fall flat, unfortunately. And that's just part of the process of being a content entrepreneur or just being any entrepreneur who's trying to create an online presence with their small business. So what we have to figure out from an online presence, personality, or brand is how do we take this random information and actually make sense out of the data we've collected. For accounts who are more specific with the content that they post, this will be a little bit easier for you to identify. But for the accounts that aren't niche specific, here's a way and opportunity to kind of narrow in on what you're actually good at as far as what the audience that's following you deem as content they enjoy. One thing that I've noticed over the years through social media is that there's two type of accounts that I see reoccurring. There's a specialist account that has a specific niche on what they are trying to produce and show to their audience. And then there's generalists. And generalists to me is more so of a lifestyle account where there's a variety of things that they like to provide and offer. And they're very knowledgeable in a multitude of things. And they use their own ways and skill sets to present that. It is true that niche content creators see more of a loyal following with their account, but it's not to say that if you fall under the lifestyle generalist type of content creator that you're not able to create that same type of audience. And I do believe it's possible. It's more so about how does your lifestyle resonate with the people who are engaging with your content. So when this comes down to you specifically, you have to be clear with the content that you're making and visually elaborate to your audience what you provide for them, what type of value that they're going to gain from watching your content. There is an exchange that's happening. You're exchanging time for value. And the more value that you provide leads you to the opportunity of people saying, I don't want to miss out on this content. I'm going to subscribe to this channel make sure I hit that notification bell because there's something that I'm gaining for the time that I'm exchanging with their content. And if you don't know where you fall in regards to being a specialist or a generalist for content creation, you need to follow your curiosity. Let's take a deep dive and say, what are your interests? What are your passions? What do people say that you're good at and qualified enough to actually teach them in that specific area? And the best way to go about this is just asking people from your inner circle ask people who grew up with you ask your family members ask your friends that's probably the fastest way that you're going to gain that information so when we realize that we all have something to offer from there it takes the confidence and courage to step out into the world and say here's what i provide for you here's the service that i can offer for you and be bold about it and be fearless about it because that's the only way that you're going to be able to push through the noise 
push through the commentary of people judging your content. You have to have a strong backbone when you're putting yourself online. So with that noise and resistance that's trying to prevent you from accomplishing the things you set out to accomplish, it makes you appreciate when you hit certain milestones, when you hit your first thousand subscribers, when you finally get monetized on your platforms. And with how social media is growing, there's a lot of financial opportunities for content creators. And that's the amazing thing about this, because when you look at the creative ways that these platforms are trying to pay creators, I don't see why anybody would not take this opportunity to try to build a business out of it. It's a huge opportunity, and it's only going to keep growing as years to come. So when it comes to social media and trying to grow your account, it's easy for you to get in your own head. Other obstacles that we may have in our mindset is that we don't have the right camera gear, we don't have the right microphones. And when I first got started with just creating content, trying to experiment, I was just using my iPhone. My first few films that I tried to make, I just went out downtown, got my iPhone, and was out there recording. And you put a few clips together here and there, and you actually have a short film. You actually have something that you can put narration to. And if you don't have content, you don't have a story to tell. So you need to be comfortable with just being out and recording. With some accounts, you don't even need to be outside to create content. As you can see right now, I'm in a YouTube studio recording this right now. You could actually be in your kitchen, home office. Don't let the environment that you're in stop you from creating content. When you have value and you believe that you have something that needs to be shared with the world, you have to make sure that anything that's in the way won't prevent you from creating that content. With having an online presence and trying to stand out, the reality hits that there's a million of content creators in the world, but it's about the way you present your content. And don't be afraid to showcase your personality. People subscribe to personalities, whether you're in tech, whether you're in camera reviews, whether you're doing culinary, food presentations, crudités, there's a lot of different creators out there making something that you're interested in. And they're all talking about the same niche of content, but they're presenting it in different ways. And that's the example that I want to use here to make you realize there is space for you in the market. Just be creative, think outside the box and say, this is the way I want to present my value. So whether you're a new channel or an older channel is a little bit more established, you want to take your keywords seriously, you want to take your thumbnails seriously, and your video title seriously. To me, out of those three, all of them are just as important because your keywords is definitely going to assist with the marketing and helping the algorithm understand where this video needs to be placed. Your thumbnail is gonna be the first thing your audience sees. So having a well thought out thumbnail is gonna be very essential to your channel. And last but not least, the title of your video is also gonna be pretty essential as well. I can't really say which one is one, two, and three. To me, they're just as equal because when you go on YouTube and type in how to edit a video, there's videos from last year, two years ago, you can search by most relevant recent upload. So whenever you make the content, your video always has an opportunity to be displayed to someone new. And that's just really beneficial for anyone who's trying to make this a business because your exposure is potentially limitless at that point. So don't be afraid to start messy. Don't be afraid to start your process not having all the answers. The best thing that you can do for yourself is just get started. I know for me, I'm a person who learns a lot more from my mistakes than learning from my successes. So it's going to be an ugly process to begin with, but you have to trust the process in the long run. You have to be committed to being uncomfortable. No one said this road was going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of critics, a lot of negative comments that come. There's going to be a lot of opinions that you don't align with. So you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So overall, these are tips that help you go from zero to a thousand subscribers. More than anything, just remain consistent with the process. It may not make sense today, but when you look back at it all, that's how you connect the dots. You can say, I had to go through this to actually appreciate and value where I am today. I had to experience these things, these highs and lows to actually value where I'm at today. And so it's gonna be a beautiful journey. Just don't give up on yourself. It's so easy to quit when it doesn't make sense. But there's more rewards than struggling on your way up to the mountaintop rather than accepting defeat, working your way down the mountain. So I wanna thank you for watching today's video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, smash that notification bell. I'm so glad to see you all thriving today. And if you have any follow-up questions for this video, go ahead and leave that in the comment section and I'll respond as soon as I can. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Y'all stay blessed out there.
Let's get it.